Hey you guys, we're putting nearly a million dollar motor upgrade in a Pilatus private aircraft. We wanna go through all the numbers and here's what's awesome. My brother Mark already just put this video out, but I wanted to make sure that everyone following along could see this video here on my channel. This is all about Mark giving you the data. Love you guys, back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. So this, this is part two of our engine install on the uh, Platus upgrade, uh, Perry, our, Perry the Platypus airplane. <gasps> Perry the Platypus? If you're not into aviation, this video is going to be so boring. I mean, check out now, save yourself the, uh, the old thumbs down experience. Um, even if you're into airplanes, if you're not into the Platus, and if you're not in, even if you're into Platus and you don't care about the difference between the Papa motor that's in the NG Platus or now in Perry and the old uh, legacy Platus, the Bravo motors, if those numbers don't matter to you, see ya. Catch us on another video. If you do care, stick around. It's going to be a lot of talk. A little bit of uh, fun numbers. Hopefully you learned something from it. But otherwise, uh, thanks for checking out and we'll catch you on another video that's not so just uh, number based. First off, a disclaimer. Um, performance and numbers and data only matter at certain altitudes and certain temperatures and certain weights. Uh, so I'm going to use rules of thumb because I want this information to stick in your head the way I have to make it stick in my head. I'm not smart enough to remember all the numbers for all the altitudes and all the weights. I have to get out my books here and look at it. But while I was flying, we went all over, over the place and I took my spreadsheets with me and on a little iPad and I took screenshots of the, the, the dash. I got thousands of them in my phone. Some of you, I know you know what I'm talking about. We just want the numbers, real numbers, not what do I think or how does it feel, but like what's the data. So uh, 100 hours is pretty easy to come by in the Pilatus. Uh, during this time, we, we, have, we have our home and business here in Utah, but we also have a home in Galveston, Texas. It's, um, it's about 1,200 miles away. And so that's four hours out and five hours back average. So just to go to Texas and back is nine hours on the airplane. So lots of time sitting there where I can climb up a thousand, two thousand feet, climb up two thousand feet again, drop down, play with different power, torques, and tent settings. And I just gather data, gather data all the way down and back several trips. We also got to go out and uh, Mike and I are invited to be the keynote speakers at the Wright Brothers uh, event out in Oshkosh. And that was a very special event and a really great time and a great time to go get some more numbers as the weather was getting colder. And um, we even took the plane up with the new engine up into Johnson Creek, Idaho, and did a bunch of grass strip takeoff and landings with uh, the back of it loaded up with, with e-bikes. So we've got real world data, camping, mountain biking, long cross country in the cold, long cross country down into the heat, and Here's the numbers. We're going from the Bravo motor to the Papa motor. Biggest differences on the Bravo motor, we have a maximum of 44 on the torque, which is 1200 horsepower for takeoff and up to five minutes. On the Papa motor, we have 1200 horsepower for the entire duration of the climb. That's 200 horsepower more for the bulk of your climb. The Bravo motor has a max continuous temperature limit of 760 degrees. Down low, that doesn't make a big difference. Up high, that's a huge difference. The new Papa motor has a maximum continuous temperature of 820 degrees. It's 60 degrees higher temp that it can run continuously without concern. And if 820 scares you, here's the number that really kind of blows my mind. They actually allow, Pratt & Whitney allows 850 degrees for takeoff. As in, that's safe. So 820 for max continuous is pulling it way back from there. And I generally fly about 40 degrees cooler than 
max continuous anyway because I like to have a little safety margin. You can also apply off the torque chart if that's how you like to do it. This is the rule of thumb in a platus. Every 200 pounds of weight is one knot true airspeed at altitude. Down lower it's not as significant, up higher. The higher you go the more significant it is. It doesn't sound like a lot but it really is. I had a someone messaged on Facebook because I posted a picture of the speeds I was doing in the platus. I was up cruising around 280 knots true airspeed at altitude. And someone commented, how is that even possible? I have an NG Pilatus that never goes that fast. This is roughly what my true airspeed is. And um, I looked at the true airspeed. I'm like, okay, he's probably got at least six or seven people in there and probably took that picture, you know, in the first hour of the flight because I could just back out the weight and time of day and see where it was. But in this case scenario, uh, 1,200 pounds is six knots true airspeed. So, of course, um, I'm flying pretty quick depending on how much fuel you have in the plane. The other thing is in that flight, it's just me and my wife. There's nobody with us. So if you've got eight passengers at 200 pounds a piece, 1,600 pounds at 200 pounds per knot, that's eight knots. So between fuel and passengers, that's just those things, two things alone. All of a sudden we're talking about six plus eight. It's a big number. What's nine plus 10? 21. So um, when you talk to people about speeds in your airplane, uh, don't ever give a ground speed. Like, stop it, knock it off, guys, because we don't care how strong the winds were. When someone says, how fast, you, how fast is your airplane? They're not asking, hey, how were the winds today? Otherwise, they would say, how are the tailwinds today? They want to know, how fast is your airplane? <laughs> wow, 13. No, yeah. no, no, there was wind. I was just jogging. Dwight, there was wind. So if someone's saying, oh, this is about the speed my platus is, yours is a lot faster, or mine's a lot faster, well, what's the power setting? And if they're saying, oh, I usually cruise at 700 degrees, or I cruise at 740 degrees, then you can say, well, if you're comparing 700 degrees to 740 degrees, every 20 degrees is 5.5 knots. And 15 pounds an hour, you can say, well, you're burning 30 pounds an hour more fuel. That's 11 knots. So real world data. So if you're now looking at back to the comparison, what really matters to me is I go from a Bravo motor with a max continuous of 760. And I like to fly 40 degrees back from there. So say it's 740. And I don't want to get into whether that's good or bad or where you like to fly. And I'm just telling you, this is where it is for me. I'm not telling you that's how you should fly your airplane. But if you take a 760 max that you're flying at a safe 720 and you go to the Papa motor and it has an 820 max allowable by the manufacturer, 820 is safe, and you come back 40 from there, you're 780. Well, the difference between 700 and uh, 20 not, uh, 720 degrees on your temp and 760 or 80 degrees on your temp is 60. 60 at 5.5 per 20 is... 16.5 knots. That's the official number. That is what I have to report as how much faster is my Papa motor in my Pilatus just changing the motor. And we got other mods we want to do too. I was able to pull some weight out of the airplane and we'll get a weight and balance when we're all done with everything because that makes a speed difference too. But if we're just looking at just the raw data, if you're just pulling out the Bravo, putting in the Papa, at, at altitude, it's 16.5 knots faster. That's awesome. Time to climb was a big thing. Um, and uh, the numbers we were collecting was from sea level at gross weight to 28,000 feet. It was seven minutes faster with this new motor. And we're talking about um, a gross weight PC-12 Series 10 with a Bravo motor, the stock motor, um, is 26 minutes to altitude, right? Depending on the day, right, and weight. But that's just for the sake of, of the day and temperatures we were testing. It's 26 minutes to altitude. Seven minutes is a big freaking number because you're pulling it all the way back to 19 minutes. And not only is it less time in the climb, but usually up at the altitude is where the smooth air is. So it could also mean seven minutes less bumps in the, in the climb for your passengers, getting up over the hills and mountains. So comfort, seven minutes more comfortable flight for your passengers. And once you level off, you're seven minutes of doing 270 to 280 knots 
instead of that seven minutes where you're climbing at 140, 150 indicated, which is more like 200 knots or so. Uh, I haven't done that math, but rule of thumb here, guesstimate, depending on the altitude. So seven minutes less time in the bump, seven minutes less time to altitude, seven minutes more time that you're at a high true airspeed at a lower fuel flow. The longer you're down in the thick air, the higher you're burning those high fuel numbers. That's a big deal. Still not my favorite part. But the thing I didn't expect, we wanted the speed, we wanted the performance. The thing I didn't expect was the workload. Pilot workload has just gone to almost nothing. The reality is on the Bravo motor, when you push the throttle up, you can go right to the firewall, right? You've got a torque controller on that motor that would and should, working properly, keep you from over-torquing the engine. We go up slow and we watch and you know, use proper pilot safety protocols. But if, in theory, everything working right, if you just hammer it, it'll go to 44 on your torque, which is 1,200 horsepower. But on the Bravo motor, as soon as you're climbing, you get out of the pattern, you get your gear up, you get your flaps up, you pull the torque back to 36.9. But a thousand feet later, which is less than one minute, your torque's down. So you grab the throttle and you push it back up. Oh, I over torqued it a little bit, come back down. And then another thousand feet, less than a minute later, you're like, oh, my power's dropped. Because as you get into the thinner air, you get less performance. You have to keep pushing the throttle up to make up for the thin air. So now, Every 60 seconds or less, you're adjusting the power, adjusting the power, adjust it a little bit too much, come back. Instead of switching radio frequencies, focusing on the next waypoint, changing the flight plan that they're giving to you in the air, and then all of a sudden looking over and go, whoa, no wonder I'm not climbing. I need to put some power to it. So with the new motor, you push it up and just fly the airplane. Don't mess with the throttle. Just leave it there. Just go. It's It's... So much less work, especially on a dark, rainy, icy layer above you, departure out of California where they're switching radio frequencies faster than you can even get in the new heading and altitude they gave you, and now you're messing with the throttle. It's gone. And I didn't realize how much of a big deal that was, like how, how much safer and more relaxed you are as a pilot. I love it. I wish Finoff would have told me that. I would have given him my money a lot sooner because it's freaking awesome. The next question is going to be, what does it cost? Give me everyone, sex! Now that I have your attention. You don't have our attention. Money! I'm listening. There's a, several ways to look at this. Our engine was 500 hours uh, from overhaul. And it would have been its second overhaul, so it'd be an expensive one. You have a 3,500 hour TBO, your first overhaul on a brand new engine before $500,000, um, give or take, right? Your second overhaul, you go another 3,500 hours, that second overhaul is gonna usually be a lot more expensive. And that could be five, $600,000. And these days things are getting more and more expensive. So for me, I put in my head about $600,000 to overhaul the engine. The new engine STC, everything done, was a uh, $950,000 upgrade, but, um, I'm already spending 600 to rebuild the motor. So it's really, if I'm already spent 600 by flying it for the last 3,500 hours since overhaul, or in my case, a little over 3,000, 3, that money's gone. I spent it. I spent it over the last several years flying this plane back and forth across the country. So you already got 600 grand that you're going to put into the overhaul. So the real difference is 350,000 is the delta. The difference between overhauling, used, or just having a brand spanking new engine that, again, when you come to 3,500 hours, it's going to be the cheaper overhaul, not another really expensive one. So that 350000 delta that we're really talking about, really, by the time you get to the first round overhaul, that exit's probably more like $200,000 delta. Those are real numbers. This is, this is, it costs money to fly these engines, and they cost more to overhaul as they age. Oh my gosh, one more thing. Holy cow, this is ridiculous. This is also one of my favorite things. I almost left it out. I fly the airplane different, not just on the climb, not first segment, second segment, like we talked about. I fly it completely different because I go to altitude. In fact, Mike and I, one of our trips, we were doing the comparison. We're like, the bigger engine at 26,000 feet is doing 16 knots faster, 16 and a half knots faster than it used to be, but it's burning 45 pounds an hour more fuel. But of course it's faster, but it's burning more fuel. But you, instead of flying there where you used to, you go to 30,000 feet. 
Now you're burning the same fuel as the old smaller engine did down lower, but you're up here doing 16 and a half knots faster. So it's actually because it can get to a higher altitude easier than it used to, the bigger engine is costing me less fuel per mile significantly than the smaller motor down low. So is it worth the $200,000 to $350,000 over just overhauling the engine? Oh my gosh, heck yeah. It's a new airplane. It's a faster airplane. It's a safer airplane. It's, it's less work airplane. I could not be happier. I can see why the Pilatus NG is such a popular airplane. And I think uh, every legacy Pilatus will end up with this engine upgrade, for sure, because it just makes sense.